Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you all are having a great Saturday evening. You know, it's kind of sad because tomorrow we don't have football for the Dallas Cowboys. None. Zero. Zilts. In fact, we have two Sundays in a row without Dallas Cowboys football because we play Thursday night against the Seattle Seahawks. I guess Amazon will get their ratings at least, you know, that, that they'll look and say the Cowboys might make up for all the losses we've had as far as revenue goes because, you know, as, um, uh, boy, Chris Collinsworth said, I think it was Chris Collinsworth, he's like, literally, if we could have Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football every week, we'd take it. It's just that big. And that's the truth. So maybe Amazon will get some of their money back by having the Cowboys versus Seattle on Thursday. But looking at this season, you know, we have been talking about how our draft sucks. You know, we've been killing, we've been killing them. You know, we've got the trolls out there that are calling Mozzie Smith, Mozzie Pad. You know, they're saying Schoonmaker, you know, he, he, he just can't do it. He was injured in training camp. And then we had, like, Overshone, who was looking good but tore his ACL. You know, we got Fioko Jr., who's on injured reserve. We got an offensive tackle, um, Richards, you know, a cornerback, and Eric Scott. You know, our draft didn't do much to help us at all. At all. But here's what should I, In fact, here's what should give you some hope i believe we said some of these same things last year when we looked at it i i I know a lot of you weren't happy about us drafting tyler smith in the first round last year i know you aren't in fact let, let me play um a clip of what skip bayless and shannon sharp said after we made that pick Jerry showing off the secret draft board there. <laughs> Shannon, you buying what Jerry Jones is uh, selling? No. Jerry turned the press conference in all about him. But Skip, look, I'm going to be very <laughs> sensitive to, to Jerry. Mm. I just think right now things are not progressing mentally as, as well as they should. Skip, you can't show that. You see what Steve Skip, they look like, I know he's not. And Steve was like, that, Jerry, don't go. Put that thing down. <laughs> That's what Steven said. Put that thing down. First of all, no, I don't buy it. Because, first, Skip, everything that I had seen up until this point, he was ranked somewhere in the 40s on everybody's. Kuiper had him 33, but go ahead. Yeah. 33. Mm-hmm. So that was the mm-hmm. earliest. Mm-hmm. But in the 40s, I think Jer- D- J- Daniel Jeremiah had him mm-hmm. at like 42. I seen some publications had him in the 50s. Okay. So I don't l- doubt it. Let's right. just let's just go. Let's just yeah. say okay. Four, let's split the difference. We'll say he's like. High 30s, maybe even low 40s. Okay. You take him at 24. Mm. If you're going to take an offensive lineman, Skip, I'll take, take Tyler Linderbaum. Mm-hmm. Because if you think hey, about it. I agree. Out of Iowa, a center. And your run game hadn't been the same since who retired, Skip? Thank you. That guy who Travis was a first-round pick. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who was a just perennial pro bowler. Yes. Uh-huh. Watch Linderbaum. Watch, watch what happens. You, you just know what's, he'll be a perennial Plug and play. Yep. First year, just watch. You'll start making Pro Bowls. Yeah, Go ahead. Hey, you're exactly right. The skip Jerry says, well, we're not going to take guys with red flags. What about yellow flags? Because this guy was flagged. This guy was flagged 16 times last year. 12 of them for holding. The Cowboys, the most penalized offensive line in football. Now you no, the most penalized team. Team in football. Yes, thank you. Skip. And the offensive line was, was penalized more than any other offensive Absolutely. line. Absolutely. Now, you, you mm-hmm. got Todd or Connor Williams. By the way, just a quick point on your 16. <laughs> you realize he had 16 flags, did Tyler Smith, at yeah. Tulsa in 12 mm-hmm. games. If, if you took the 16 and projected into the 17 game, NFL game season, right. that would lead the league. Yes. Even at 17 games. Okay, I, I can stop there. So, they said we were stupid. Stupid. This guy, yeah, they got him in the 40s, Skip. And right now, Tyler Smith is beginning to be one of the best right guards, excuse me, left guards in football. He's that good. He is so good that it's like uh, maybe you don't want to move him back out to tackle. He, he, he's doing damage right there 
at left guard. So you got to look at that and say, yeah, this guy's headed to be possibly an all pro. All pro. Let's let's look and see what the boys at pro foot pro football focus. Offensive snacks wise, he's 35th with 609. Penalties wise, he has eight, which is not good. Sacks allowed, he's only had one. Only given up one sack. His overall grade is a 78. That's pretty damn good for a guy that's only in his second year. So that's a win from last year's draft. Sam Williams. Now, Sam Williams has had two special team penalties. He's got to cut those out. But Sam Williams is actually, you know, finally getting some time. You know, he did block a punt. And he's got eight sacks, I believe, in his career right now. Let's, let me look at it up real quick. Let's see. He had three, uh, let's see, four sacks last year. And he's already got four this year. Um, he has 17 combined tackles, nine solos, four quarterback hits uh, out there. And the problem for Sam Williams is they've got Dante Fowler's. They got D Law. They've got, of course, Micah Parsons. They, you know, he's only a cog in the puzzle. He's not a full time starter, and he's still getting some, which is why he's also playing special teams. So you got to say, okay, that's another win. Jalen Tolbert. Now, now let's 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 put it where it is. I mean, you know, we're, we're telling truth there. We're not bringing you lies and bullshit. Jalen Tolbert was completely lost last year. Two catches, two catches. Jerry Jones sold us a bill of goods and said, you know, hey, that Jalen Tolbert, he he's real good. You know, he he's you know, you won't even think about Amari Cooper or Cedric Wilson because Jalen Tolbert's here. Well, he was ass ass last year, but this year. Jalen Tolbert has played in 11 games. He has 16 receptions, 183 yards, right? A TD, and averaging 11.4 yards per reception. Uh, I'm not going to say that, you know, he's a Hall of Famer or anything like that. But from a guy who got two catches last year and seemed completely lost, now he's beginning to, you know, he's just recently started getting some playing time. And you look and say, okay, this, this, this boy ain't too, he, this boy is good, right? So that's three, the top three. Then you've got Fergalicious. Fergalicious in his second year. Fergie, 40 receptions right now. He's got 40 receptions. That's really good. That's really good. He's got 421 yards, a 10.5 yard average, and four TDs. So wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So you're telling me that your top four picks, one might be an all pro. Another one is a great role player, okay, and Sam Williams, rotational player in Jalen Tolbert, and you're starting tight end who is probably going to have um, the best tight end season we've had in quite a while. Now, I know um, – uh, Dalton Schultz, I think he, I think it was close to a thousand yards one year. I, I, I look at it and say Ferg should be like seven fifty yardage wise, but may have about you know seven or eight TDs. That, that's pretty good for a guy in his second year. Uh, Matt Lewinsko, well, you know he's not getting on the field, but that's okay. He's the fifth round pick. But Deron Bland, Deron Bland. Deron Bland was part of that draft class last year. Deron Bland, who has now beaten out Hall of Famers with pick sixes in a season, who has the most interceptions uh, in, of any player in the NFL, other than quarterbacks like Josh Allen. <laughs> Josh Allen's thrown that many. But be that as it may, he has become a pick magnet and is headed to possibly be an all-pro as well. So potentially, right now, right now, so let's see if we got this straight. That is five guys that are important to this team. Oh, did I mention Damone Clark? And I forgot to look up Damone Clark's stats. But Damone, who we drafted with a fuse back, um, with a fuse back, we weren't expecting him to play at all last year. And last year, he had more tackles 
the Nicobe Dean. You remember how crazy Philly 500 went? We got Nicobe Dean! We got Nicobe Dean! Yeah, right. I mean, they were literally, you know, jumping up. I mean, going cray cray. But here's what we got with Damone Clark because quietly, quietly, Damone Clark has been playing lights out. What he has been doing so far, so far, Damone Clark, linebacker, he's got 75 tackles, 48 solos, four tackles for a loss, and one quarterback hit. They also drafted John Ridgway. I'm still mad that they ended up letting him go. But you look at this class, and this class may be a class to remember. You're talking about Tyler Smith, possibly all pro. You're talking about Deron Plan, possibly all pro. Sam Williams could be an eight-sack guy. Jalen Tolbert could be about a 30-catch guy. Jake Ferguson might catch 70 passes. Deron Plan, oh, I already talked about it. But Damone Clark will be over 100 tackles. That's some incredible drafting that we have right there. It's just that most of those guys didn't really start getting into the groove until this year. And maybe we're looking at it the wrong way when we start thinking about our draft right now. That we're fortunate to be in a spot where we don't need them to start today. That they're actually able to catch their breath from college football to training for the combine to the combine and, and everything else, the draft, and then getting thrown into the pros that maybe we're better off that these guys are actually having the opportunity to get their feet wet with the team and develop and come through because now you're starting to see Mozzie Smith because you've got a guy like Hankins in front of him who can teach the guy. You begin to see him play more. And Overshone, unfortunately, you know, we won't see him until next year, but I think he's going to be lights out as a linebacker. And you're beginning to see Schoonmaker getting better and better as the season's progressed. So let's slow down before we keep killing these guys and saying they're a bust or a wasted pick. Because you could look at this and say a lot of that. You know, how many people thought Duran, Duran Bland, when we drafted him, was going to be, you know, the pick magnet? Probably most of you didn't. How many thought that Jake Ferguson was going to be a decent tight end for us in the fourth round? Probably didn't. And Tyler Smith? A lot of y'all probably said, why did we draft that guy in the first round? So there you go. All right, good people. I'm going to go back over here. I'm putting the face frame together for the cabinet over here and uh, stuff. But just kind of taking my time today. And then I'm going to go spend some time with the most beautiful woman in the world, Miss Tracy. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Long as the Eagles lose, I'm still going to have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Because we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. But we actually had a good team. What? Oh, now, now you want to see, see the shit near when he with y'all. Well, we been dealing with it all this damn time. How do you fucking call plays? How in the fuck? I don't get this. No, Jason Garrett. Seriously, Jason Garrett. How do you fucking call plays? He was over there trash. I'm over here. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't believe this right now. I don't believe this right now. How do, you feel, how do you feel about the team, my Yo, team? Oh my God, like, it's Jason Gertz! <laughs> it's Jason Gertz's fault! Like y'all been saying for 10 years. Jason Gertz! Oh how in the fuck now you call, you, uh, how do you right? call on four, fifth, uh, third and 15, you call a five yard play. Then the next play, you go down, you call a 20 yard play, wow. you hit the first down. Then you put Danny Dimes in the position to throw a fucking interception. Seriously? On the goddamn ball or something to get the field. Or oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to hell home. I'm going to hell home. 
we all go, you all lost. So don't get mad, don't, y'all can, can get pride in my jewel and my anger, but y'all lost too. Fuck y'all, god damn it, shit, fuck, let's go home. How in the hell, the last four games, the last four games now, Oh, three, three out of four, you're driving down the field near the end zone and you throw a goddamn interception every goddamn time. What the oh, hell is that? We got, got all that time. Yeah, yeah, now you see the shit. What the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell? You call it payback is a mofo. How do you throw an interception payback. every goddamn time? Payback. How do you, exactly, how did we get to Eli throw all the Eli Amanda 2.0. Eli Amanda 2.0. Jason Garrett 2.0. <laughs> what the bleep, what the bloody hell? You're doing interception every, oh my God. What? Oh, didn't I?